Recording this on Sunday, July 10th, 2022, we've got the estimates coming up from Box Office Mojo and how they're expecting the weekend to go. Let's ha let's do a quick little dive into the box office numbers here. Okay. Let's see what we're doing. Thor, like I said, I don't want to see Thor. I really don't need to see a Thunder Goddess with PMS, but uh, that's just me. But anyway... It's expected to make $143 million. So this is like the big shot that Disney has had in a long time. Biggest shot in the arm. That's $143 million. That's on uh, 4,300 screens. <clears throat> Coming in second is Minions, The Rise of Gru. They're making another $45 I, million. I so want to watch this movie. They have made $210 million in two weeks. I don't know where this is coming from. This, is this not like the fourth or fifth Despicable Me movie? This well, is the no, third Minions actually, movie, right? No, this is the, the second, second Minions, Minions movie. movie. I want to see the movie because, I'm sorry, the Minions do make me laugh. And the only reason, because when I saw the trailer, there's a scene where they're trying to learn karate. And the woman that is teaching them karate is like, use your head to break the boards. And they're in line and uh, one of the Minions named Kevin gets up there and hits his head on the board, and it doesn't break, but he's, like, stumbling back. And the one behind him is, like, snapping his fingers and, you know, shredding his shoulders. Like, Kevin, 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 Kevin. Gets up there, and he's about to break the boards, and then he grabs Kevin's head and just, like, starts slapping his head against the... And I was... I died. That had me. That had me hooked. I was like, I'm in. I'm so in. <laughs> like, that That right there made me laugh so hard. But the... So, uh, yes. Well, the... With Thor Love and Thunder, okay, going back to that real quick, uh, 143 million, that's just domestic. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 159 million estimated international, and that's a total of 302 million worldwide. Understand when it comes to the worldwide stuff, Disney gets to keep like 10% of that. But it, it still counts towards the gross. So that's $300 million for its opening week, weekend. And I still consider Thor, I know he's considered one of the core Avengers, but he's still a B-tier superhero to me. But, mm, mm. <clears throat> And then Minions, goodness, they're 210 million domestic, 189 million international. They're at $400 million worldwide in two weeks. Golly. <laughs> and I can just imagine... Now, you know Minions does not have... Did not have the production budget that Thor: Love and Thunder did. They're, they, if they're not at break even, they've, they've got to be really close. Top Gun: Maverick is still in third place. Made eleven mil, made fifteen point five million dollars. That's a six hundred million dollar domestic gross so far. Worldwide, that's one point one eight billion dollars for Top Gun: Maverick, and that's in what eleven weeks, something like that. Six weeks. That's, it just seems like it's been three months. <clears throat> and then coming in fourth is, believe it or not, Elvis with $11 million coming in. They've made $91 million domestically. Fifth is Jurassic World Dominion. They've made 8.4 this week, which is uh, $350 million total. And Lightyear coming in behind the black phone. Boy, how the mighty have fallen. Remember when Pixar was screaming for the last two years because all their stuff was being sent straight to Disney Plus? Because Disney wasn't releasing things theatrically? I, I think Lightyear should have went to Disney Plus instead of the theaters. <laughs> this is the one they went live in the theaters back with, and Light Beer is just... And the best part is... Here's a question I gotta ask. Do you think this is actually going to have a long term effect on Chris Evans? Because one, how many people actually identify Chris Evans with Lightyear right now? Because everybody knows that Tim Allen is Buzz Lightyear. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to do much because nobody cares. But let me let me put it this way: which which affects Chris Evans more, the fact that he took over from Tim Allen as the voice of Lightyear because for apparently the only reason is because Tim Allen is a Republican. He's a registered Republican in Hollywood. That's why Disney kicked him out. How much of it is that, and how much of it is Chris Evans calling all of the Buzz Lightyear fans idiots for objecting to that one forced-in lesbian kiss in the movie? The one that got them kicked out of about a dozen countries in the Middle East. I, I mean, I honestly don't know because... I mean, I, I didn't hear about the Tim Allen part. I did hear about the Chris Evans part. But I don't think, I think, you got to remember, these, Chris Evans was one of the Avengers that did a whole special when uh, Biden was being elected. They did this whole campaign thing. It was him and a few others, and the only one was wasn't there was, Chris Pratt, because I think Chris Pratt just didn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody was like busting at Chris Pratt because he's like, oh, you're, you're this and this. And they tried to get him canceled. And then all that the Avengers was trying to stick up for Chris and yeah. just telling him, telling people he's a good guy, I'll leave him alone and all that stuff. I don't, I, I mean, when you put the whole politics thing in there, I don't know how much of it would affect. I think the reason why Lightyear itself just did not go nowhere is because one nobody cares about Lightyear two there's a whole difference between the way Lightyear is presented and the way Toy Story was presented like Toy Story was presented for kids mm -hmm. Lightyear is presented and I think they think oh well Toy Story people are now grown up mm -hmm. and they have kids that they might want to go see this movie but yet you made a movie that was kind of like an action film and not a light-hearted, kid-friendly film. And then, with the controversy of the kiss, which is like, one, why are you making such a big deal out of it? Two, it's a kid's movie. We shouldn't even talk about any type of kissing in this film. If it does, nobody pays attention to it, but due to the fact that you keep talking about it, it does kind of put a red flag on the film. And there's more to what I'm trying to say, but honestly... <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just going to... Uh, let's be honest. They miss... Pixar misses John Lasseter severely at this point. They'll never admit it, but John Lasseter was the heart and soul of Pixar. I mean, yeah, he was a hugger, but considering you're putting... You're deliberately inserting lesbian kisses into children's movies. You ain't got a whole lot to talk about hugging, okay? Also, these are the same people that voted for Biden who also hug children. <laughs> yeah, he's, sniffed a, them. he's a sniffer. So, uh, pick or choose, people. Pick or choose. <laughs> Laster's over at Skydance Media. and I, It seems like they're up to something, but I can't remember what all they do. They've got some... Either way, I'm going to be keeping an eye out on Skydance. If they release anything, then Skydance is trying to move in. Yeah, they're trying to. They're trying to. They're trying to get up there to that special level of Pixarness to be and, like, hey, hey, you got the heart. Like I said, you got the heart and soul of Pixar now over at Skydance. If anybody's going to bring them along, it'll be him. But I do want to make one more thing before we get off the box office mojo report. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is still in the top ten, Chris. It's been ten weeks. It's a Marvel movie. It is a Marvel movie. It was a weird Marvel movie, but they've made four hundred eleven million domestically and nine hundred fifty three million worldwide. That's this this movie has made a billion dollars globally. I did not call that. I didn't think it would make it to the billion dollar mark. And honestly, Marvel is kind of a damaged brand right now, I thought, but apparently not if they're they're able to pull it off at the uh pull off Thor and Doctor Strange movies making billion dollar moves, then well, you gotta maybe there's some life left in phase four. You gotta remember, okay? You have to see these movies. You know why? Because the the story that they tell 
will also be part of the next movie. And you never know when that movie like Iron Man or Avengers or one of them that will spark where everybody's talking about it. And the movie is so good that it's like, oh my goodness, you got to watch this movie. But you have to see the other one to, to get to this point, you know? Let me tell you, I think this is where the fans are right now. The fans don't trust Hollywood anymore. Oh, I'm, yeah. This is the reason I didn't go out and watch Thor Love and Thunder Friday night. I don't trust them anymore. I'm going to hang back, and I think there's a lot of fans like me who are, I'm going to hang back and see, is this any good? Now, Top Gun, I went and saw that Thursday night because it's Top Gun, and I heard good things about it. So I decided to check it out and see, and it, it turns out, I mean, it wasn't an awesome, it wasn't a, a perfect movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it was a heck of a lot better than most of the tripe we're being force-fed right now. I tweet, I actually posted a tweet on this. I think you liked it a couple of days ago. All the, all the crap they're putting out now that they want everybody to pay with, everybody, they want everybody to pay for this stuff, and they want you to take out like $15 HBO Max subscriptions and $20 for Netflix and all this other crap that they want you to pay for. Meanwhile, all the good old fun stuff is available for free and you can find it almost anywhere. Pluto's got like a couple of, like a couple of 20, couple dozen thousand movies and TV shows sitting in it. It's basically almost Netflix light. Netflix classic Netflix light yeah. over there. Roku channel, same way. I think Roku's actually closer to Netflix, classic Netflix, than than uh, Pluto TV is right now. But all these great movies and TV shows and stuff, it's just there for free. You sit through some ad breaks once in a while, but it's like a minute at a time, um, two minutes tops. Hey. Uh, but yeah. I, that's why I was saying I think a lot of people are like me, they're hanging back that first weekend to see, is this worth the effort? Because, like we were discussing before the show, I know Jane Foster's Thor, I know Valkyrie's Thor, I know Miles Morales' is Thor, and <laughs> your ass is Thor, and all this other stuff. And it's just... <laughs> so... Um, mm. I do have hope that superhero movies are kind of just calming down and some good movies are on this way. I saw two trailers. I want to throw this out here. Mm -hmm. I saw two movie trailers that caught my interest in a very big way. Yeah. Okay. Now, before, there was a movie called Beast with uh, 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 Enos Alba that looks really good. There's a movie uh, called uh, Three, uh, I don't know if it's Two or Three Thousand Years in Longing, but that uh, with another, it's another Enos Alba movie. That he's he plays a genie in that one. I can't wait to see that movie. But there was two movies that dropped: The Woman King and Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And these movies look really, 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 really good. Especially The Woman King. The Woman King. I remember that was like one thing I learned. I can't remember where I learned it, but I remember learning the story. But it's a a. a it's an African tribal all-female warriors. Mm -hmm. And guess who... And, and the person who plays the main character is uh, Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen her like this. Like, seriously. You will be shocked. It is really good. And Amsterdam is a movie where it's about these three friends, Christian Bell... Can't remember the other guy and Margot Robbie. <laughs> and this movie has a huge cast. It has like Robert De Niro, Mike Myers, uh, uh, Michael Sheen, or Shannon, I think it's seen. Something like that. Um, uh, it, it, has, it has a bunch of famous people in it. But it looks really good as well. So, there's some good movies coming your way. I will. I'm suggesting these. If you have not seen the trailer, the trailers are out. Watch them. I it blew my blew me away. So I'm 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 all aboard. Yeah. So at least there are things to get excited about. So oh, yeah. And more Idris Elba is always good. Idris Elba. So. Oh yes. 
I, I, want, I wonder how history is going to judge this, because remember Idris Elba was one of the leading contenders to play the new James Bond. Yes, and I believe he still is, I think. No, they've... They've replaced him. I can't remember who the new, G new James... I'll look it up here in a second. But, oh, really? Uh, <clears throat> but I'm just wondering if history is going to remember him as having dodged a bullet there. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see who the new James Bond is, but... I don't think yeah. they've actually came out. No, with I guess sex. they haven't. But because I, I remember reading like maybe like a couple of weeks ago where the the whatever her name is that created the whole thing or is involved. Yeah, she said it's going to be another four years mm -hmm. before we find out anything. Yeah, yeah, it shows Idris Elba still apparently the favorites of the bookies in London. Harry Styles is apparently in there. And no, he's too young and scrawny. No, not. No. But anyway, Austin Butler and Schwedler's Jafor, or whatever his name is. That was the one I think was the leading cause, leading guy I'd heard. And then they're actually talking about Tom Cruise. We'll see about that. No, that won't and Robert happen. Pattinson. That would be hilarious. That would kill them. Oh. Franchise dead. Well, you know what? That would get rid of him as Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> Anywho. So, 